people with policy y'all thank you for tuning back in it's your girl Uda Uda. before we begin make sure you like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications so you're notified whenever i post a new video um follow me on my social media and yeah we're gonna go straight into it y'all i'm breaking out like really bad i'm not even gonna show you where the pimple is because i know you can see it because it's like right there in my face but we're gonna let it be today we are going to watch oh my gosh i just moved my camera my bad y'all today we are going to watch winners and losers from the gop presidential um debate this is from valuetainment i think i'm saying it correctly valuetainment but this is just like clips from the p the pbd podcast so with that being said they're just pretty much giving their take on who they felt won the gop presidential debate me personally if you watch my last video my top three was and a lot of people disagree some people agreed um i think chris christie did the best mainly because he started off with people booing him pretty much and then he ended off with people cheering him do i think he's gonna win no i give nikki haley second best i think nikki haley did really good she whenever she spoke she spoke with substance um she didn't do too much you can tell that she really just you know showed up showed out pretty much and then third i gave to vivek ramaswamy i think vivek did really good his confidence is really good um obviously there were some points where just personally i think um maybe i wouldn't say he got too carried away of getting like grabbers but like some points didn't come off authentic to me um just me personally but it was his first presidential um debate and i give him props he did pretty he did really good in my opinion so th th that was my top three um so i want to see with that being said i'm going to see what they say and we're going to go straight into the video so much is just going on in front of me like all this water bottles and stuff let me go ahead and play it Losers. Do you have your winners and losers? I do. do you, you want to go first with your winners and losers, and I'll give mine. You want to go first, or you want me to go? All right, I'll go first. Okay. My winners and losers. I think anytime you do, and by the way, this was our prediction that we made. If you want yeah. to take a look at this, this was the prediction pre-debate. So we gave. Okay, so pre-debate, they felt like. Okay. So I don't watch the podcast a lot. I always see clips of it. So PBD. Okay, so let's break it down. PBD podcast, PBD thought that um, Vivek was going to be the winner. Mike Pence would be a loser. Shots at Trump. Obviously, Chris Christie, he needs to stop making his personality around Trump. I'm not going to lie. Shots at Biden, DeSantis, most surprising, Tim Scott, um, Adam, Vinny, Tom, and Rob. Let's see, let's see. I disagree with Adam with putting Tim Scott as a loser. Well, obviously, this is then prior to debate. Even prior to the debate, I wouldn't even put Tim Scott as a loser, mainly because I wouldn't have high expectations from him, um, just with his poll numbers and everything like that. So you can't really think someone is... A, I, I wouldn't declare someone as a loser if the expectations are low. Um, but yeah, this is very interesting this to you guys rob you got this from us when yesterday or something like that and yesterday. you guys kind of put it together so winners uh, i thought uh, vivek was going to be the winner i thought pence was going to be the loser then shots at trump uh, christie he did that shots at biden you have uh, uh what do you call it uh, DeSantis. most surprising tim scott uh i don't think tim scott was the most surprising i thought it was haley by a mile a uh, winner, yeah, uh, I don't I know agree. who you had there, Adam. That's North Dakota's governor, I had, right? I had an underdog, <laughs> yeah. and I was absolutely <laughs> so, wrong. I so thought that Doug he broke Burgum, his, he broke his this foot. guy got he, crossed over. Look, I'm not going to lie. Doug Burgum, um, he didn't do that bad. He didn't talk much. I, I put him like a 6 out of 10 because when he talked, he actually made sense as far as like his stance, like conveying his message, even though I disagree with some of his stuff. He didn't talk much, but... I wouldn't put him as like a winner. Like I, I wouldn't even overestimate him and think he was going to come out on top. But he yeah. broke his foot. He broke his uh, ankle and he, he's, he torn Achilles. He didn't do You're that playing bad. basketball. Some staffer crossed yeah. him up. Yeah. And he's, he's a 60 year old man. Guy. It was. Uh, 
sorry for pausing again but if anything i feel like hutchinson probably did like the worst of of them all mainly because he didn't talk much and when he did talk he didn't really talk about nothing so that's like a double whammy Achilles injury i actually like the line he said i, I yeah. like how he opened it up he kind of took a shot at himself i thought yeah. it was funny he yeah. said go out there and break a leg i did, I did. I did. <laughs> my bad y'all but i uh, thought he was going to come out strong because i think he's actually a businessman yeah. entrepreneur also a governor, I thought that he was going to do his thing. He by, by the way, just yeah. so you know, what everybody said afterwards, just yeah. so you know, I had no idea he was until you kind of said who he was. Right? Yeah. Like he's actually good. Uh, everybody said if somebody else said what he was saying, it would have been received better. But he didn't know how to deliver his message yeah. better, so he had good policy. He doesn't have that oomph. Yeah. So let me let me just go through my winners and losers. Here's what I got. Number one, I think one of the biggest winners is who we nobody talked about, which is the moderators. I thought the moderators crushed it because hmm. nobody bitched about them. There right. was literally nothing said about the moderators. Think about the town hall Trump did with that one girl that used to be one of Caitlin Tucker's Collins. aides. Oh, Everybody oh. trashed her. Yep. Guess what? She, if, you know, in this sense, I thought Brett Baer actually did a very, he looked at the audience, was very pleasant. He didn't look angry, angry like. They did do good overall. In the beginning, though, when DeSantis really tried them, though, they asked them about climate change this sentence really going to talk about they said raise your hand if you believe climate change is like a number one issue or ongoing issue or something along the lines of that this sentence was like we're not 12 years old let's debate like we're here on this thing let's debate that's where the moderators should have stepped in afterwards they did they held everything composed they were, took charge but that specific moment if i was a moderator i would have been like uh no who do you think you are we're gonna raise our hands like be You're for so real. Like, you're not even polling, like, close enough to Trump to even tell us how we're going to operate this. So, like, let's relax. Sir. Keep it down. Yeah. Keep it down. He was kind of like, hey, can you guys please so we can talk more policies? And Martha McCallum was. I thought yeah, they yeah, were yeah, great. Like all, I yeah. thought they were great. Even the funny moment with Chris Christie about aliens. aliens. She <laughs> laughed. I never thought no. a person from New Jersey, you know me. Why would yeah, you ask exactly. me about aliens? I thought it was a good moment. Uh, winners. Tucker Carlson won. Trump won. Mm -hmm. Vivek won. Haley won. Twitter won, streaming won, podcasters won, Rumble won, Oliver Anthony won. Those are my winners, who I mm. have. Losers, Woo. Cable, um, Asa Hutchinson, I don't think he was going to be anything anyways. Uh, Christy, and pretty much everybody else, and I put DeSantis. That's why I disagree. I'm not going to lie, because a lot of people thought Chris Christie, like, I feel like it's like half. A lot of people think Chris Christie did horrible. A lot of people think he did good. Me, personally, I'm not going based off whether I agree with what the what's coming out the person's mouth or not. Just strictly debating. Chris Christie has a level of comfortability on a stage that nobody else does. Chris Christie started off with so many boos. So many boos. And then when he started defending the Constitution, even though people disagreed with him, you could tell he started gaining a little bit more respect. And then when he ended off with his last, his closing speech, pretty much, his closing spiel, spieled, he had claps. So I feel like as far as like the debating, like just, obviously he's not doing enough to where people are going to go out and vote for him. But I feel like he pretty much like stood his ground on the stage despite what was coming his way. Like I don't think that so how good someone did is based off of like who has like the most fans in the audience or who has the most cheers, but who keeps their composure the best under like the circumstances they're in as well. That plays a total role. And that's pretty much why I picked Christy as first, because I feel like he just held himself as neutral crush under pressure. is what I put the census at. Uh, we can go through some of the other stuff here in a minute, but what, who were your winners and losers? I only have one winner for the whole night. Let's and, hear it. And uh, Nikki Haley. Uh, it was Donald J. Trump. Trump. Because uh, why was he the winner? Number one, no, listen, two days from now, nobody's going to be talking about this JV debate at all, period. The fact that half our audience was watching Trump and not the, the debate is also a telltale sign. I also didn't see anybody up there on stage that's going to dismantle Trump from the top position. Uh, if anything, I think that uh, his that's lead true. is only going to widen and widen and widen. And uh, we'll see what happens with uh, everything legally speaking. Um, uh, whatever's happening in Georgia, we'll they see how that affects things. But it's clear and clear and clear. Uh, the MAGA vote ain't going anywhere. Uh, he has a stranglehold over the Republican Party. Whether you like it or not, uh, he's the guy. And DeSantis did nothing to stand out. Vivek, you know that I think he's an absolute beast. If he was running as a Democrat, he would be the next president. He just, you know, the Republican evangelical base 
MAGA is not going to support a brown Hindu guy. Sorry. Um, but I think he's an absolute beast. Um, and everyone else, I think, is a loser. I think Mike Pence. Well, two things. I agree with him pretty much saying that Trump won that night, mainly because no one on stage really stood out to the point where they're like, oh, wow, they can really go against Trump. Their numbers can go against um, Donald Trump, especially DeSantis. Me, personally, I think DeSantis did really bad. I don't. He doesn't scream leader. I think um, Vivek had the most like leadership um, persona. Like, he stood on his ground. Like, when they would ask questions, he was the first to raise his hand. Like, he stood on his own beliefs and stuff like that. Second, I don't know. I don't think I agree with him as far as, like, him insinuating, like, oh, Republicans or Trump supporters wouldn't even put in a brown Hindu guy in, in position. I, I disagree with that statement mainly because, um, I don't know. It just doesn't sound nice to say, like... Some people may think it's true, but I don't think that's really like the root of it. I think if Donald Trump wasn't running for re-election, I think Vivek would be Donald Donald Trump supporters would really go towards more Vivek and maybe dissent I wouldn't even put dissent as probably dissentis and Pence. Like I think Vivek would be higher in polls if um Trump wasn't even in the race. So I wouldn't put that as a factor that they wouldn't want to see a brown person position you know he's the only person that lost twitter followers during this i think he he showed some fight you know he's as crack ass crack a white as it gets and he's going to get that evangelical vote that's great he did have one line where he said i'd put the constitution over donald trump and any time that you're going to see mike pence on stage with donald trump this next debate don't underestimate what mike pence is going to say on stage to basically torpedo Trump. Now, will it work? I don't know. But don't forget that Mike Pence, he takes the high road. He's going to do his Christian thing, but he's got a vendetta. Don't forget about that. Yeah. I so think Trump's Mike the only Pence winner. has one outcome. I think Mike Pence only has one outcome. What's that? Torpedoing Trump? Torpedo he's Trump? only doing it for his kids and grand grandkids. He's, mm -hmm. he, this is only for his legacy. He's not convinced he's going to be the president. Right. He yeah, himself doesn't believe he's going to be a president. His family doesn't believe he's going to be a president. He's just trying to protect the legacy of a man who spent his entire life pretty much in public service to say, I did the right thing, kids and grandkids. And then from there, he can live the rest of his life as a working for Fox or representing for whoever it is. I think it was purely a legacy thing for him. I think you're right. And I actually think that... He I agree with that. Mike Pence, I feel like nobody on this stage, I'll say this, actually believes they can even beat Donald Trump. That's something I have to... Put out there i think that they're they think they have a chance i would say i think vivek thinks he has a chance i would say that um decentes actually i don't even think decentes thinks he has a chance anymore um i think after the debate i think nikki haley thinks oh wow i actually have a more i have a chance because i prior i feel like no one really truly believed they actually had a chance to beat donald trump donald trump's support system is solid like it is very it's like Nicki Minaj and her fans and Beyonce and her fans like once you, they're solid it's like you can't break him like I think at this point they're really fighting for VP like they they already know that except for um Chris Christie because Chris Christie's not going to be a VP to Trump and Trump wouldn't want him either Vivek Vivek's not going to be a VP for Trump Vivek already came out and said he wasn't um, Mike Pence would not be a VP for Trump because we already saw how that happened the first time. I think Nikki Haley, um, out of everybody, would probably be um, Trump's VP. Um, Tim Scott, he would want to be VP. I think I think Tim Scott and Larry Elder, even even though Larry Elder didn't um, make the debate, I think they would actually want to be like Trump's VP man. He and stuff. was a little more amped up than usual. I, agree. I, I don't know if that came across. It, it was for you guys. One hundred percent in the you know. And then yeah. again, Trump's the, the winner. Yeah. I thought Nikki Haley, you know, did her thing. She's got zero chance. Zero. She's running for VP. You think Nikki Haley's gonna fucking out Trump? Trump. It, one thing was yeah, clear. I, I don't know if you guys saw this. Unless you have that like I can't look away quality, and you talking some smack. Vivek does it a little bit. Even Chris Christie does it a little bit. He ain't going anywhere, though. Dude, yeah. that's what we've turned into. This to. These debates have literally turned into, like, I need to watch this. It's like, you got to suck all the oxygen out of the room. So, Tim Scott, sorry, brother. You're done. Have a nice day. Yeah. You're a swamp creature who's been in the Senate for decades now. Get out of here. Asa Hutchinson, who's that? Mike Pence's dad. Keep it moving, old man. Even my guy, Doug Burgum. 
solid guy. He does not have the eyeball effect. Chris Christie, how have you not lost a fucking pound in 30 years, buddy? How is this possible? Like, come on, dude. Come on. Come on now. Y'all, that's that's mean. Like, that's personal. I'm I don't even I'm not even a Chris Christie fan, but y'all gotta chill out. Chill out with these jokes. That's not nice. Like I even I agree though. I agree as far as like Chris Christie doesn't have a chance. Um, Tim Scott doesn't have a chance. Asa Hutchinson, I don't think, I wouldn't say he n never really had a chance, but he never really had a chance. Um, Doug Burgum doesn't have a chance. Um, Nikki Haley, I think is the most, per out of everyone, will most likely end up being the VP if he selects his VP out of this line. Mike Pence doesn't have a chance. Yes, like, you know, like people think it's funny. It's actually not funny. No, it's, it's not it's, funny. It's, you don't have control over what you put in your mouth. So, How the hell are you going to have control exactly over that. other temptations? If, yeah. if you can't yeah. manage your weight, yeah. you're going to man like, and I'm not talking bad about big people that have problems around the world, but you, you can get healthier and better. I don't trust. I don't yeah. trust your decision. Not one making. pound. Not a pound. Like, he got thirty bigger. years. He got bigger. Yeah. But go ahead, Adam. I'll so I mean, look. At the end of the day, uh, and I mean this like genuinely. This was a JV debate. If you don't have Trump, you don't. Have, if you don't have the heavyweight champion in the world fighting, you know these guys should all be thankful and lucky. But I, I think when all is said and done, you're going to cut out the six, seven, eight uh, characters, which are Tim Scott, Doug Burgum, Asa Hutchinson, even Chris Christie. Goodbye. See you later. You're going to be left with DeSantis, Vivek. Mike Pence and Nikki Haley and Trump. That'll be your final five. Dunzo. Yeah. Trump number one. Vivek, I think, will overtake DeSantis as number two. I think DeSantis so. DeSantis number three. You got Mike Pence. You got Nikki Haley just for a little. F I actually disagree with this one. I think it would be Trump first. Vivek will be second. I think Nikki Haley would actually surprise people and go to third. Um, I think DeSantis would be fourth and Mike Pence would be fifth. I think that debate actually really helped. If it helped anybody, it really helped Nikki Haley because people were in shock, um, for one. Two, I first I was thinking like, I was like, wow, I really think strategically, I thought it was bad for the Trump administration for him not to be on the debate stage. I, I kid you not, I'll be the first time I was like, he actually needs to be on there because what he's doing is he's giving them more screening time to like um, present themselves to like, undecided voters and like put their name out there but in actuality i think it was very smart that trump did not now that i'm looking back right now i think it's very smart that trump did not um partake in the debate because number one him doing the interview with Tucker carlson like brought in a lot of views as it is and then two him being in such a major lead like 40 50 plus in a lot of these polls it's like he's really He's really strategically, I wouldn't even do it either. The same thing with like the Democratic um, primary right now. A lot of people are wanting Joe Biden to debate um, Robert F. Kennedy specifically and also Marianne Williamson. But, and I would love to see that too. Like me personally, I would love to see specifically Joe Biden and Robert F. Kennedy um, debate. But strategically in the Biden administration, they're like, why would I debate? Like I'm leading 30 plus points, like 30 plus percentages on a lot of these polls. Why would I go out of my way and debate? So like that makes sense as well. Email effect. And that's what you're going to be looking at in the next major debates. That's the final five. Vinny. I, mean, I, I think uh, we are, we're all on the same page in that obviously Trump w basically won a race, won the, the best Olympic 100 meter dash, didn't even have to show up. Mm -hmm. Obviously the winner. We didn't see Rob, uh, our HR even made a great, a great point. Zero MAGA hats in the entire, there was no MAGA in that place. Like I know there was Trump supporters. Nobody's rocking the gear. Nobody, you know what I mean? They were all just anti the hell with supporters. this. He's not here, he not even there to support. Um, I think uh, another You got a feeling there was not MAGA people I, there? I, I felt that they were, you know, they were in the crowd, but Pat, no gear, no. There was a lot of MAGA people. Just because they didn't have gear doesn't mean they weren't there. Because even with the crowd, you can tell there was a lot of Trump supporters, mainly because whenever they were trying to make Trump the topic of conversation, and they asked them something along the lines of raise your hand if you're going to support, if Trump becomes an becomes a nominee since he's um, leading in polls. If he becomes a nominee, raise your hand if you were supporting him, yada, yada, yada. 
And like you could tell by the audience reactions based off of people's answers that there was a lot of Trump supporters. That's Vinny, you I can't saw, be that naive. No, no, I, what do you mean? I saw, yeah. I no, saw a hit. handful of people with MAGA hat. You're right. It wasn't as much as you think. It wasn't as much. And when they mentioned, I heard right. when they were mentioning Trump hat, I got some applause. But you heard a lot of, they were booing when they were talking about Trump in that place. So. Yeah, no, I don't disagree with that. But what I'm saying is it was. That's crazy. Because when I watched it. They were booing a lot when it came to people who were talking, when they were asking questions, they were talking down on Trump. That's what I, my perception, my reality, not my reality. That's what I remember when watching To it. me, uh, it wasn't zero, zero. So the way they said it, they gave the left side to DeSantis. Yeah, big time. They gave the right side to Vivek. Vivek. And then they gave Haley close to where you were where sitting I was. All the girls, yeah. And then some of the, you know, Pence folks and all the other guys were kind of sprinkled all over the place. But, you know, you, you can't, what, what crowd do you think had the biggest crowd there? Who did you feel that this, had the most? Wow, good. The, the loudest was Vivek. Like the girls, the, the energy. But DeSantis had a lot of DeSantis people. DeSantis had a lot of DeSantis people. DeSantis had a lot. Yeah. But you know what else I thought the winner was? The Democrats, the Department of Justice doing their thing. Trump, he's getting indicted today, right? Four o'clock in 23 minutes. Those are the winners, bro. You know who won? <laughs> the Democratic Party, the Department minutes. of Justice are going after the, the main guy, Pat, who is the number one. Because at the end of the day, Pat, and, I, and I've been saying this, not to jump off, everybody, it's Trump, Trump, everybody's like, oh, you're a Trumper, you told Trump. It didn't even have to be Trump. It was just we wanted somebody that was going to go against mm. these assholes. And sorry for my language, the establishment. Everybody and I'm t everybody always likes to say that word, the establishment. He's the only guy, he's the first guy in my generation that was like, you know what? No more swamp, no more this. The hell with China, the hell with these people. America first, and what did they do? All this, all that swamp was like, no, 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 F you. It made everybody go. Trump derangement syndrome. I, dude, I never liked Trump. When he was on um, Apprentice, year five, I never gave a damn. So I You're started fired. looking at all the videos of him on all the shows going, I love America, the shows that would never put him on. I think it's also important to keep in mind that um, all these people who are so anti-Trump, not people, all the politicians, I want to keep, I want to make that clear. All the politicians that were so anti-Trump they were once taking checks from him. They were once shaking his hands. They were once going to his golfing tournaments. They were once going to his charity events. They were once buddy buddy with Trump until Trump put himself in a position to go against them and the establishment. Even though I'm not like a Trump supporter, I know how to take personal feelings aside and look at the reality of things. And I think just as much as people wanna say Trump is A, B, and C, specifically politicians, I wanna talk about this. Just as much as politicians want to talk about Trump is A, B, and C, they need to look in the mirror. You're the same way. So what makes you any different than him? That's why it's like, I tell people all the time, don't trust these politicians. Like, do not trust them. Do not vote based off party affiliation. Vote, vote based on policy. Whoever puts the best policy up front that can help you and your family and your community and your state in this country, vote for them. Point blank, period. The other extra stuff, oh, he's corrupt, he's this, he's that. Leave that aside. Vote on policy. Letterman and everything. I love America. All I care about is this country. Why do we care about other countries? Who cares about Ukraine? It's America first. So obviously he won. The Democrats are kicking ass because they got the Department of Justice on him. The Santis, it was almost as if he knew the questions first and he was reading and he knew everything. It was robotic. It was disingenuous. You nailed it. The last podcast we had, you said, and I quote, if he, this is his only chance, he better come out and talk to us, mm. talk to the people. It yeah. wasn't. It was looking down and blah, 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 and COVID this, and he was doing this. And yeah. I noticed something about him that a couple people on Twitter were mentioning. Rob could pull it up. I saw him walking like during the commercial with like a hunch, and I looked, and he had on high-rise boots on. Oh, he wears his boots. I didn't, no, but they, look at that. Look, can you go, get on that, Rob? It was... He wears those boots everywhere. That. But He wore them when we met with him short in, uh, is he, Pat, is he short No, he's a big guy. Well, guess he's what? Pat, he, look like, at those boots. Those were uncomfortable. Yeah. He looks like he's walking uncomfortable. When we, which, when we met him... He's, I don't know, he's probably an inch or two taller than me, an inch or two okay. shorter than you, I want to say. I'm but, six foot. Pat's six four. But wearing those I'm boots? I'm saying he's six... I I didn't notice that. Maybe because it was commercial break. But I'm even if he does do that, that's besides me. I don't really care if someone... I don't know. But the first part, I agree with him 100%. Ronda DeSantis came off too rehearsed. 
like not genuine very like I studied my answers the night before type of vibe like I was not I don't even like Ronda's answers I was just not feeling it like I couldn't even listen to him speak the only person like the, there's only a handful of people I can li actually listen to them actually speak up there and like Nikki Haley I can listen to her speak even though I disagree with her Vivek I can actually listen to him speak for a certain amount of time Chris Christie, I can listen to him speak because he talks regular. Mike Pence, I can listen to him speak. He talks regular. Like, one <sighs> six, like he's five nine. Yeah, he's no, not, he's not. Yes, he is. He's, he's five, nine. no, he is not five nine. He's yeah, five, nine. yeah. He's, DeSantis yeah. is not five nine. He's, no yeah, chance. Nine. He's short. But anyway, well, Pat, but, according to the internet, you're five four. So, well, no, no. What I'm saying to you is, I remember standing next to him, and I remember looking at his shoes. At best, he's five ten. Which five ten is tall? He's five ten. ten is then he's wearing cinch in, six inch heels. Well, well, dude, no, I'm six inch he was look at those. He was taller than six me. Six inch would be six four. By the I'm way, just, the cowboy no boots. Way. Just look at this cowboy <laughs> boots. boots. What's the word? Boots. No, but but if you want to find a heel, like, the heel, the heel, heel of the boots. I just heel, got catfished uh, by Ron DeSantis' <laughs> heels. <laughs> Yeah, so if you look no at way. cowboy boots, heel what? What do you what do you, what do you what question do you ask? Three inches? Like how many inches? Three inches. Add? He's adding three inches, and okay. he was in the middle, and he was that taller than everybody so else. Okay, yes. okay. So if he's five ten, and you he's six like feet, six that makes one. sense. Yeah, he was up there. But you, looked, you got me wrong. Yeah, yeah. You catfished but, uh, me with them high heels. By, by the way, and, and and the other part that some wow. people will say is, you know, when you wear cowboy boots, the first thing you think about is he's from Texas. I don't know it. No. Like, but I've been in Florida for a while. I, I don't see anywhere here that you know. Like, it's there's not no, a thing. No, it's not a Born thing. Born and raised in Florida. Florida. Nobody yeah. wears cowboy boots. He was uncomfortable. In what I'm saying yeah. is, not and really. I, I can get the strategy. You're in the middle. You're standing. I yeah. think, uh, again, Christie and uh, Pence. I saw them, like you said, in between commercials, hugging, talking. There, that's an alliance. Those <sighs> two. Those two have Vivek. Awesome, Pat. I don't like the fact that he opened the speech with the same exact line that Obama used about him. Yes. And I'm the guy kid with, with a funny last same, name. I, yeah. I kind of, yeah. listen, I, I think he's a great speaker. Uh, Nikki Haley represented really the whole speaker. section that I was in. Really, really loved her. I think she she stepped up. Um, the guy in the end, Asa Hutchinson. Asa Hutchinson. Asa, Asa. whatever. He, to me, this he looks like Biden's second cousin. <laughs> They look Asa like they're the cousins. That the, we're looking looks, at that picture right there. Dude, that is insane. They Stephen, look like they're related. Stephen Crowder and by the way, said that, that he looks... Asa at the debate. That's his picture at the debate. That's, That's crazy. That haircut is a good a politician. Uh, Stephen Crowder compared him to a, one of those uh, white okay. lab rats with pink eyes. He's That's, like that. Yeah, he does. And then, <laughs> no, you know who he looks like? You know that one... Uh, 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 okay. So, pretty much, overall, I'm not going to watch the whole thing. Um, I feel like it's going to turn into a roast session. I don't want to... Part of that, y'all go click the link in the description to watch the full clip. But overall, I feel like their um, their overall opinions and views of the GOP presidential debate wasn't too far off than from what I was thinking. Obviously, some nit nitpicks here and there, especially when it comes to Christie. I feel like Christie's own is the main one where half the people are like, he did really good. The other half of people, he did horrible. Whatever the case may be, um, my overall opinion. Trump's going to be the um, primary winner. Um, yeah. But let me know your thoughts on the comments down below. I really, really want to know your opinions on the debate. Who do you think won? Who do you think lost? Um, and so forth. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you so much for supporting. Love y'all all. God bless y'all. And this is Uduai Connecting People with Policies. Toodles! <laughs>